When something that's popular, it is bound to collaborate or cross over with something else. Whether it's stuff like Fortnite bringing pre-existing characters from multiple mediums into their game, or Sonic and Hooters. Nico and I actually talked about that on the podcast a long time ago. And comic books aren't an exception to that. Batman, for example, one of the most popular things ever, has had a multitude of collaborations with brands like Pez, for example. But one thing I've always found super fun is when actual comic books are made for these. And I'm not talking like Spider-Man advertising a cheap ring toy in ASM 159. I mean an entire comic purely for a collaboration. And since I've never went ahead and read any of these, I decided to ask all the wonderful readers over on Comic Geeks for some of the weirdest, random, and goofiest comic book collabs. And oh boy, did we get some interesting ones. Remember to follow my Instagram and comic deeds to participate in videos like this and just for updates on content. Now let's get started with the first one, which is Subway and Justice League. Now, product placement doesn't really bother me if it's quick or subtle, but because this miniseries is quite literally sponsored by Subway, they are practically throwing these sandwiches in my face. Subway Presents Justice Lead is four issues long, and I'm ashamed to admit that I genuinely like it. It's incredibly stupid, poorly written, and has some of the goofiest dialogue I've ever read, but that's what I love about it. Each issue revolves around popular athletes that I do not know because I don't watch sports. They talk about how Subway energizes them, team up with a superhero, and that's it. The entire thing revolves around Subway. This is so awful. I love it. They are wearing Subway shirts, holding Subway sandwiches, talking about their orders in grueling detail, and nobody shuts up about how Subway now has avocado. You can't beat the oh-so-energizing bacon avocado on wheat. Mmm, so good. You haven't even bitten into the sandwich. Also, I never realized just how powerful Subway makes you. These guys negated Gorilla Grodd's mind control because they ate a goddamn sandwich. A sandwich that has avocado, the superfood for the everyday hero. Oh, my powers. <laughs> Absolute cinema. Then, Blake Griffin, is that a, is that a real person? That is a real person, okay. Yeah, then he cheats at basketball by using the Green Lantern's help. Now, I'm not too familiar with the rules of the game, but this has to be illegal, right? My favorite aspect of this though, uh, like I mentioned before, is how everyone talks about what they ordered at Subway with as much detail as possible. It's so robotic sounding, like nobody talks like this. Where do you get the energy to perform like that? I could always use a little extra stamina in my duties. It's all about eating right. Avocados are a superfood and the fuel for the everyday hero, and Subway has such an amazing sandwich selection that it kept us energized. <laughs> I, I can't I can't do this anymore, I'm driving myself insane. This. And what's funny as well is that the art is honestly really good. I think it's a different artist for each issue, but the first one was my favorite. This doesn't look like it was made cheaply or, or quickly, but I think the best way to read this miniseries is by just completely ignoring that this is a sponsored comic, and to look at it more realistically, it makes the experience much more fun, in my opinion. Like these people are fighting supervillains, moving at light speed over a sandwich, and here my dumbass is a tummy ache every time I eat Subway. But as someone who hasn't had Subway in probably four years, I could go for a sandwich right now. The marketing is not bad. Maybe I'll get a Subway sandwich. Maybe one with avocado. Hey, did you know that avocado was a superfood for the everyday hero? And the way these celebrities and athletes are crammed into the story is just hilarious. Issue 1, like I said, being my absolute favorite. Also, this came out in 2011, so I'm not sure if anyone has actually gotten into some kind of controversy since then. Well, except for Jared Subway. Jared Subway himself is here. He may have been able to win against Manhunter, but he did not win in court. Eminem meets Punisher. What? I'm not even sure where to begin for this, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. This has to be one of the weirdest crossovers in the history of crossovers. So if this is supposed to be some kind of promotion for Eminem's at the time new album Relapse back when that was new, and you know, that's supposed to be a, a horror album, I think. 
but this comic does literally nothing to show that. So essentially, Eminem is wrapping up a concert before the Punisher, for some reason, pulls up and just murders all of Eminem's friends. I have a note in my script that says Eminem looks like Tom Holland here, and I, I really don't remember what that's supposed to reference. Eminem is pulled away by Barracuda, a character I personally know nothing about, uh, but anyway, we get some simply brilliant dialogue. This is, this is cinema. Eminem and Barracuda run from the Punisher, and Eminem pretends that he's in danger, which is really funny if you read it with his voice in your head. The Punisher goes, ready to save him from the supposed evil Barracuda, until Eminem, Eminem catches the Punisher by surprise. I really don't know much about the Punisher, but isn't he like a, a military veteran or something? But then, oh, a plot twist. Barracuda points a gun to Eminem's head. <laughs> Sorry, this panel is just so funny. No disrespect to the artists, it's just... Yeah, so Barracuda was evil all along, and he kidnaps Eminem and the Punisher. Apparently, the Parents Music Council hired Barracuda to get rid of Eminem. Also, Eminem and Barracuda were like childhood friends. Like, what the hell am I reading? Like, like, th this timeline is so interesting. Eminem finds some way to escape and finds this guy, hoping he can help him and the Punisher. But then, oh hey, wait a minute. Oh look, there it is. That's the advertising for relapse. Anyway, Eminem comes back with a chainsaw and just obliterates Barracuda before freeing the Punisher. But because technically Eminem shot at the Punisher, he's left in the middle of nowhere with a phone. And that's how it ends? I, I, again, I, I don't even... Like, what am I reading? For a one-shot that's supposed to advertise Eminem's album, it does... Well, none of that. Also, it kind of makes Eminem look pathetic. I mean, hell, any normal person would in this situation, but it feels like Eminem is just kind of getting humiliated and betrayed the entire time. Left in the middle of the ocean, making us wonder if we'll ever see him again. Well, this did come out in 2009, so he, he did come back. Don't worry, everyone. This is such a weird one. The idea, the characters, and the person, you know, the general plot. I mean, the art is pretty good. It's consistent. I think the faces look a bit funky at times, but it's not bad. Why, why Eminem and Punisher is what I'm wondering, though. Like, nothing really happens, and none, these two don't really make sense together. I'm not sure how to describe it. I think what it is is that I'm, I'm driving myself insane by reading these comics. I can't find a way to deeply explain the, the perfectly written intricacies of this story, because I feel like it really does just speak for itself. But this honestly makes me want to see more comic crossovers with rappers. Like, hell, give me Travis Scott and Martian Manhunter. So, turns out, KFC has not one DC crossover, it has two, but this video, like I said, is driving me bonkers. I'm sorry, but I don't want to read Crisis on Infinite Kernels before the actual Crisis storyline. So today, I will be talking about its sequel, KFC Across the Universe. This is about Colonel Sanders essentially wanting to expand KFC to other planets, aiming for his new Zaner Chicken Sandwich to be universally famous. And with the help of the Green Lantern Corps, that's exactly what happens. I can't believe this is the only Green Lantern comic I've ever read besides Emerald Dawn 1 and 2. I am, I am losing my marble. The Colonel, with the help of Green Lantern, successfully brings KFC beyond planet Earth, is what we think. Turns out all the containers end up being <gasps> empty. This obviously angers the Colonel, him even mentioning that if there's one thing he simply cannot abide, it's a no good thieving varmint. Damn. So after Green Lantern splits his power into two, giving, giving some to Colonel Sanders, they go on a mission across the universe. With the help of others, the Colonel and Green Lantern find out that Larflees is the one who's been stealing all these sandwiches. Colonel Sanders even gives Larflees a, like, like an estimate for all the sandwiches he's taken. $3,457.50. Now, that's a lot of money, especially when you see that a Zinner sandwich in 2024 anyway costs about $11.49. Now, um, according to my calculations, this means that Larflees would have stolen around 300.9 Zinner sandwiches? Unless I'm completely wrong, I've never been a great mathematician, and these are the Canadian prices I'm looking at. But either way, it's a lot of sandwiches. Green Lantern... Green... <laughs> Green Lantern and Colonel Josh Darn Sanders have a heated battle with Larflees, until he realizes that the Colonel smells exactly like those sandwiches that he loves so much. 
So with a bit of conversation, Colonel Sanders offers Larflees all the Xeno sandwiches he could possibly want if he opens a KFC on his planet. Even using the Green Lantern to like construct a KFC training program thing. Now, because of the Colonel's hard work helping the Green Lantern Corps, the Guardians of the Universe officially pronounce Colonel Sanders an honorary Green Lantern, the story ending with that and the Colonel basically wanting to make a profit off the Green Lantern Corps. Surprisingly, I think I prefer this much more to the Subway one. Yes, the advertising is very blatant, with zero shame in mentioning the Zener sandwich every five seconds, but it, it definitely has the most consistent plot here, and the most, like, normal dialogue and plot. Colonel Sanders isn't getting powered up by his sandwiches either, or fighting these super strong characters out of nowhere. He's given the powers of Green Lantern and simply wants to stop Larflees from stealing something that was meant for the rest of the galaxy. So this one just makes sense, something Eminem and Punisher sadly didn't achieve in my opinion. But overall, this was a very interesting video to make. It never really occurred to me just how many brand collab comics exist. Hell, this last one was literally a sequel. But I had a lot of fun at the end of the day, and I also got really hungry for fast food that I don't even enjoy. If you followed though, hitting those buttons and tapping the bell would be nice along with checking out my other socials for updates and whatnot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. It ain't hard to tell, I excel, then prevail. The wankers contacted, 